Good morning and welcome everyone to our Harvest Thanksgiving service. A special welcome to the Caridor Bolly Black Joint Choir for bringing some extra shine to our service, helping us praising and lifting up the name of our mighty God, who is our source and our provider. And thank you so much for George Bale for helping us with the music uh, from the organ and from the piano as well. A huge thanks to the PW and all those BB, uh, GB, all those who were involved in uh, decorating our church. Feel free to take some time after the service to walk around and to see all the beautiful decoration. This morning's service is more of an old age service. The evening 7 p.m. service will be more a traditional harvest Thanksgiving service. Please spread the word and invite others to be with us as well. Reverend Alvin Little, the previous convener during the vacancy, is uh, going to bring God's word to us. And I've heard rumors that some refreshments will be served in the hall. So please invite others as well. The donations are going to be distributed between International Meeting Point and we are collecting for Storehouse as well. Uh, but you will find some cooking apples that those are from Greta Egan and she's sending that with love to the church. She is not able to be here with us in person, but anyone who wants any cooking apples, please take as much as you need. Uh, you will find them by the door. Any birthdays this past week? Can we sing happy birthday to anyone? No birthdays. Then a couple of announcements. Our very own Twinkle Tots are doing a great outreach in the local community and they asked our support. So if you, are, if you find yourself free on a Thursday morning, would you pop in once in a while and have a wee chat with the lovely parents, grandparents, carers who are here with their wee ones. You don't have to have any special skills or gift. Just show God's love and our congregation's care to them. They are meeting on Thursdays from half nine and they are asking us to show ownership and to pop in and have a wee chat every now and then. You don't have to commit yourself to be every week or fortnightly, but just to show up every now and then. This Thursday, we will um, start a new communicant series of communicants class. If you are interested, please let me know. They will be in the manse on Thursdays this month, before our communion service on the first Sunday in November. That's on Thursday evening. Friday afternoon, we will have a messy church in the community hall. That's a joint adventure between Christ Church, Church of Ireland, and us. Sam Shaw from God's Handiwork Puppets will be us. Will be um, with us. It's free for everyone, um, and a dinner will be provided for us as well. So spread the word and come along. Chat. Uh, check what is happening at the Massey Church. Finally, the theme of today's service is food for the body and food for the soul. And I invite you to say the opening prayer together. The words are coming up on the screen. So let's pray that together. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come together and worship you at this harvest celebration. We welcome your presence amongst us. Come and meet with us as we worship you, hear your word, and pray together. For the glory of your name. Amen. I came across Psalm 118, verse 1, and I think it fits perfectly for today. It says, Give thanks for the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And I'm going to use this throughout the service. And I would like to invite you that whenever you hear the first part that give thanks to the Lord for he is good, 
Would you please join with me saying the second part together? His love endures forever. Do you think you will be able to do that? Yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's try it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Indeed, well done. Keep your e um, ears peeled. Now let's stand to sing our opening praise to the tune of What a Friend We Have in Jesus. We are singing God the Maker of the Heavens. The choir is going to sing for us. Now the year is crowned with blessing.
Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever. All right, let, let's do it once more. <laughs> Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever. Indeed, well done, church. We are learning this morning. We, we are already learning this morning. I know that people here in Northern Ireland are really keen of the different type of breads you have, and I'm still learning the different types. My taste palette is not the most sophisticated, but I have prepared a challenge uh, for some willing volunteers this morning. Those who love their breads, and if you don't have any food tolerance, um, I need at least six volunteers to, to, to come up and to help us with tasting different sort of breads. There will be a reward at the end of that word last week. Yeah, one, thank you very much for the first brave volunteer. We need a few more on the way. The first round could be um, children, but not necessarily. Yeah, feel free to come and join us. For <laughs> yeah, you're most welcome. <laughs> for the second round, okay. <laughs> that is five, six. Very good. Thank you so much. You are great. So would you please find for the yourselves Whoop. Um, for the younger one I'm going to give uh, some some pre-made blindfolds uh, can can you have your, uh, blinding yourself um, just just putting these on is that all right and here's the first challenge right putting them on Maybe, maybe can we get an adult um, helping? You can. We will get there. We will get there. I'm sure it will be a lot smoother for the adults when it's your turn for the next round, right? All right. So, um, can, can you stand here uh, in, in a line, please? And, yeah, here, just, just, I, I will help you. Here, just like there. And now you can uh, close your eyes and, and blind for yourselves. And I'm going to give you um, a different piece of bread. And I'm really interested who can find out what sort of bread you are getting. All right, so let's see. Here's the first one. Robbie, are you ready? Coming. If, if, you hold your hand in, if you hold your hand in front of yourself, then I will put it in, in your hand. Okay. Um, um, that is some sort of bread. You have to find it out what sort of bread it is. Here it is. Yep. Well, it, it helps. It helps because you cannot see it. You can eat it now. You can take a wee taste. You don't have to eat the whole lot of it. You can start with small pieces. Did you all get a piece? No? Oh, here is it. Yeah, what is this? It is food. Oh, oh, it is. Here you are. You all got a piece. So would you please taste them? You don't have to eat the whole lot of it if you don't like it. Um, you can. It's nice, but you don't know what that is. Yours is pancake. You were the quickest one finding out. Okay. Well done. You you think that's a soda bread? Close enough. It's a potato bread. What, what is yours? Do you think you know what is yours? Uh, I think it's a wrap. It is a wrap. It is a tortilla, tortilla wrap. Yes. Have you tasted yours? Yeah. All right. Do you know what that is? It, tastes like, it doesn't even taste like it. It just feels like a cherry. Um, yes, those are breadsticks. And now it is on. I'm sorry. That, that was my mistake. Um, what, what about you? Did you find out what that is? 
one of the Indian crackers. It is a non bread indeed. And what do you think? What was yours? Um, I don't know. You don't know. Any guess? Um, a slice of bread. I don't know what was. A slice of whole meat soda bread. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you very much. You can take the blindfolds off. Would you please leave them there? And uh, you can keep them. Or you can leave them here if um, if you don't like them. You can take them off. I need help, right. please. <laughs> please come and help. Now it's another turn. Uh, it's easier for the adults because you have already heard what sort of breads do we have. Um, I might have a surprise uh, here too, or a two. Um, may I have some grown-ups coming and uh, taking this taste challenge. Thank you very much. You can take your seats. Can I get some grown-ups? Very good, very good. Thank you. Please pick one, one of the blindfolds and put them on. We have three already. We are halfway there. Maureen. No? All right. <laughs> no pressure. Three, four. Can we get one or two? Johnny, maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Please take your places then. All right. There's no big trick. Mainly, I'm using the same um, stuff. Here you are. That's one. And two. And James, that's for you. Oh, we have two chances. Smells good. <laughs> Smells good. All right. Can we eat it? Yeah, you can. You can take it. You can eat it. No food allergies, Wendy. No, no. No. All right. Here you are. So, you don't have to eat the whole lot of it, but uh, I'm interested if you found out what yours was. Soda bread? Soda bread, okay, yeah, correct, well done. Um, no idea, breadstick. Breadsticks, which says on the seed, yep, perfect. What about yours, James? Oh, uh, crisscross bun or something you call it. Hot cross buns, yes, yes, yes exactly. <laughs> James? Mine's potato bread. Potato bread. Perfect. Wendy? Um, do not. It, they were indeed. Well done, you. So, Church, um, who do you vote um, the, the, the prize, the award <laughs> for? Who, who should get? <laughs> your, you, yeah, your mom, your mom. <laughs> okay, why? Well, um, because you were the quickest telling, um, and you were unanimous, here is a lovely sordo, and uh, thank you so much for, for coming and helping this morning. You can leave the leftovers there, um, you, but you can take them if, if you like. It's good that the choir sang before this activity and not after, right? And it is just amazing that uh, from, the, from the flour uh, we need to make bread comes from a very simple seed 
Uh, seeds like the ones you can see on the screen and these seeds are sown into the ground and then they are watered yeah they are sown into the ground then then they are watered by the rain God brings up the clouds he's really good doing that here in Northern Ireland right we have lots of rain we have lots of water and then God is bringing up the sun as well here in Northern Ireland we have a cloud or two around all the time do God is nurturing the seed in the soil and it germinates and it grows and it produces lovely crops like the one you saw in the video before the service. And then the farmers are doing their job again and they are harvesting them and they are the, the grains, the tiny grains, there are loads of them now. They are being refined and processed and we have all the lovely different kind of breads to feed our body but God is not only giving us bread to eat he's giving us so many things we can be thankful for all the meat and the fruit and the vegetable and all the rest God has provided us with many delicious food to enjoy today we are celebrating harvest and harvest is an opportunity for us to remember that all our food is provided by the Lord God. He is the one who gave us seed initially. He's the one who gave us the soil, the rain and the sun. He is the one who gives us strength and to bless. He is the one blessing the dedicated farmers those who work on the land to plant the seed and then harvest the crops. God is the one who fills the oceans, if you, if you go to the next slide, with all sorts of fish and the land with animals that we enjoy to eat. Listen to this verse from Acts 14, verse 17. It says, Yet by doing good, he, God, has given evidence of his existence. He gives you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He fills you with food and your lives with happiness. God is the one filling us with food and our life with happiness. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. So, if God is providing everything we need, how do we respond to God's goodness? Um, I think Wendy um, recognized that she got a piece of the donut. What do you see when you are looking at, at this donut? Chocolate. Chocolate, okay. So, when, when you look at this donut, even if you are sitting somewhere at the very back, I hope you can see some of it. Do you see the hole of the donut? Or do you see the hole at the center? Which one do you spot first? What do you recognize? The hole of the donut or the hole in the middle of the donut? Do you ever go around and say, I love this donut, but I really, really miss the center, but I could have got one bite more. I'm, I'm being robbed. I didn't get the center of the donut. Do you ever do that? Well, if you are a teenage boy, I can, I can understand if, if you ever do that. But most of the time, we don't do that. Why do we do that with God? He's giving us so many things in our life. All, all the chocolate bit and the sprinkles and all the energy and even more than what we need. And so often in our prayers, when we are talking to God, God, I don't have this. Where is that part? I'm missing that part. Have you recognized that the donut is supposed to be like this? And our life is supposed to be like that. We are not supposed to have everything. Of course, we can pray to God and we can present our requests to him. But are we recognizing all the good gifts He's been generously giving us with all the sprinkles and the chocolate even more energy than what we need. Or do we say, hey God, I don't have this. I'm missing that stuff. I could have more. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. We don't usually complain about the hole in the center of the donut. We should give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his love endures forever. Let's sing our next praise. Come, ye thankful people, come. So, how can we not concentrate on what is missing from our life, but what we do have in our life? Here is the second challenge, and it's not only for a few, but it is for everyone. You have an option to choose. Um, the first option, would you start praying, if you are not doing that already, would you start praying before every meal? and recognizing God as your provider, giving him thanks for the good things he's been giving to you. And would you try using different words every time, not a set repetitive prayer, just dedicating a moment to recognize God's goodness to you? That's the first challenge. Before every meal you sit down, just pray recognize God and his goodness. And the second one, um, you can choose either or. If it's easier for you, then would you take a moment every evening before you would fall asleep to find five things you can praise God for that he has given to you during that day? 
I'm not going to ask the homework. I'm not going to ask you to write it down. It is for you. Here is the challenge. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. So let's put that into practice, how to recognize God, how to praise Him for His good things. Uh, we are going to pray together. I'm going to read uh, the first bit, and then I will ask you to join in uh, for His love endures forever. We are going to look into different situations uh, in our prayer. How can we recognize God's presence, His blessing throughout the challenges? Let us join together in prayer and please join me uh, after each and every segment saying His love endures forever. Let us pray. Even though I need to get out of the bed before everyone else in order to prepare back breakfast, find clean clothes, iron a shirt and cope with frayed tempers. Thank you, Lord, for my family. There are many who are lonely. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Even though I have to get up early to commute to work, work long hours and pay high taxes, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to work. There are many who have no job. Give thanks for the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Even though mom won't buy me all the clothes I really want, thank you, Lord, that I have something to wear each day. There are many who have no clothes. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Even though I don't find always what I want to eat in the kitchen cupboards and in the supermarket sometimes runs out of the things that I like, thank you, Lord, that I have enough to eat each day. There are many who are starving. Give thanks to God, for He is good. His love endures forever. Even though I have a lawn that needs mowing, rooms that need painting, and a fence that needs fixing, thank you, Lord, for my home. There are many who are homeless. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Even though I have to go to school every weekday, work really hard when I get there, and then have loads of homework, thank you, Lord, for my school. There are many who don't have an opportunity to have an education. Give thanks for the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Amen. Part of our response to God's goodness is to thank Him, to praise Him, to recognize Him for what He has given us. Another part of our response to God's goodness is to share what we have with others. Many people around the world, and even in this country, don't have enough food to eat. God has provided more than enough food to go around but often we are not willing to share it because we forget that we are actually all part of one human family. So other part of the response is to say sorry to God. And here is another prayer I invite you to say together that is coming up on the next two slices, slides. Let's pray our prayer of repentance. Forgive us, Lord, where we have failed to be thankful for all your blessings. Forgive us, Lord, where we have put our hope in our wealth rather than in you. Forgive us, Lord, where we haven't shared what you have given us with others. Help us to become grateful and generous people as we put our hope in you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. A prayer of repentance is so showing that we are really sorry for our faults and mistakes. And true sign of really being sorry is that we will start making changes in our lifestyle. We don't go back to do the same things over and over again. We have ongoing donations to storehouse and international meeting point is going to receive so many things that we, are, we brought to church to decorate today. They are going to be distributed through these charities, Christian charities, to those who are in need. Also, if you have an unused phone or replacing one in the next couple of months, you might want to consider bringing it over so we can forward them to Ukraine, answering their appeal. Let's change our lifestyle. Let's recognize God and let's recognize the need in our community. Let's stand to sing our next praise for the fruits of his creation. I started this service telling about the little seed um, that is being planted in the soil and then it grows um, and produces more and more seed, uh, is the source of the flower and so many food that we need for our bodies. But there is another type of food that we need, food that gives strength and energy for our souls, not for our body. This food comes from a different sort of seed, which God also generously gives us. Let's hear the paraphrase of Jesus' words about the parable of the sower. Plant some seeds. Some seeds fell into a path. Before these seeds had a chance to grow, some birds flew in from out of nowhere and ate the seeds up. Some seeds fell into stones and rocks. These seeds started to grow, but their roots couldn't go deep enough to get water. And when the sun came up the next day, it burned up the plants. Some seeds fell among thorns. They grew, but so did the thorns, until the thorns got so thick they blocked out the sun and rain. Still, other seeds fell into good soil that was perfect for these plants to grow. These seeds grew into big, tall plants, and they made seeds of their own. 
and those seeds became big tall plants too. Eventually, those seeds grew to produce many times what was planted. When he had finished, Jesus said, whoever has ears should listen. But not everyone who heard the parable understood it. The disciples came to Jesus and asked, why do you use stories when you speak to people? And Jesus explained that just because people hear information about God doesn't mean they understand it. But sometimes when we hear a story about God, we can understand something about him that we didn't understand before. Well, people must have still been confused because Jesus went ahead and explained the story of the seeds and the farmer. The farmer scattering seeds was like Jesus telling people about God's plan to rescue them. Remember the seeds that were eaten by birds? They're like the people have heard about God's rescue plan, but didn't understand. They never got a chance to learn about God or start to follow him. The seeds that fell into stones and rocks, these were people who heard and believed in God for a little while, but they gave up when following God was hard to do. Their faith wasn't very deep, like the roots of the plant weren't very deep. What about the seeds that fell among thorns? These were people who heard, believed, and started to follow, but they couldn't trust God with their whole life. Their worries and selfishness stopped them from growing, just like thorns block the plants from getting sunlight and water. And finally, the seeds in the good soil. They're the people who hear and receive Jesus' rescue, and then they follow Jesus, and their faith keeps growing no matter what happens in their lives. They grow strong and healthy and help other people to follow Jesus too, just like plants that grow and produce seeds to make other plants. Jesus wants people to know that it's not enough just to hear his words or stories. We can put our faith in Jesus and follow him. Basically, we have to trust God with everything and do what he says, even if that means some people don't understand us, or even if we get worried and make mistakes. And if you're watching this, that means you can trust God and do what he says too. And that's the parable of the seeds in a farmer. God is our father and he loves us with a love that is greater than anything else in this world. He wants to bring us into his family where we can enjoy knowing him as our father, where we can experience his love for us. However, because we have chosen to ignore God in our lives and we live self-centered lives, thinking about ourselves, thinking about what we miss from this life. We were separated from him and it feels like God is very, very far away from us. The good news is that God loves us so much that he has done something about this. Amazing as it sounds, he sent his son Jesus to come to earth 2,000 years ago. Jesus came to show us his father's love. And then when he was 33 years old, he was crucified on the cross to take the punishment for the sin we deserve, <laughs> for our sins. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead proving that he is God's son. If we choose to come to Jesus, believing that his death paid for the wrong things we have done and turning away from living a self-centered life, we are welcomed into God's family where we can know God as our father. Not only that, but we are given a very special gift, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit actually comes to live inside us, making life with God an exciting reality. This is the seed that Jesus was talking about in the parable of the sower. And it is a seed that is given and offered to each and every one of us. But we have a choice with what we do with this seed. And we saw in the parable, we can immediately forget about the good news we have heard. Or we can respond to God's invitation to know him, but then fall away because of the trouble in our life. Or we can respond to God's invitation to know him, but then fall away because of worry or riches in our life. 
or we can respond to God's invitation to know him and enjoy a fruitful life with him. We are all offered the same seed, the seed of an invitation into a relationship with our loving Heavenly Father. We know we need food for our body, to keep our body alive. This invitation into relationship with God is the spiritual food that we need to bring our souls into life. I wonder how you all would respond this morning to God's invitation. Let's take a moment of quiet as we think about God's love, his care, and how he invites us into a living relationship with him. Give thanks for the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. I will give everyone an opportunity to accept God's invitation of relationship by praying a simple prayer, quietly, silently, in your heart. You don't have to say a word. You can repeat my words silently in your heart, as much or as little of this prayer as you want. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love that invites me to know you. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again so that I could be fully forgiven and receive your gift of life. I am sorry for all the ways that I have rejected your love and have lived a self-centered life. Please forgive me. I now turn away from living life my way to follow you. Please come and be my Savior and my Lord and fill me with your Holy Spirit. For the glory of your name, Jesus. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. This morning, as we have celebrated harvest together, we have been reminded that God gives us food for the body. We respond to God's goodness to us by being thankful and by being willing to share what we have with others. God also gives us food for the soul. We can respond in different ways to this food, but if we receive it, let's be thankful for it, and let's share that with others, living a fruitful life. The, the choir is going to sing us as we are meditating on the message, The Bountiful Harvest.
Thank you so much for the choir for helping, praising and blessing God Almighty, who is a generous provider. Let's stand to sing our closing praise, praising God, great is thy faithfulness. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.